there are four different levels of structure for proteins. So we're going to talk about each of those. The primary protein structure is simply the order in which amino acids are linked together in a protein. So just like we gave, you know, like glue, ala, sear, sear, as an abbreviation for a tetrapeptide. That gives the order of the amino acids. That's what the primary structure is. Um, insulin was the first protein whose uh, primary structure was determined. That was back in 1953, and it took eight years of work to establish the sequence of amino acid that is present in insulin, 51 residues, eight years. Today, something like that could be done in a couple of days. Uh, your book gives a nice analogy. Um, proteins are like words, and the amino acids are like the letters in a word. The order of the letters is important, not just which letters there are. Right? I, I'm sure we could think of several words that are very different depending on the order of the words. In fact, there's a lot of games, word games, that are based on that. You take these letters and rearrange them and make different words out of them. The, the protein backbone in proteins is, is just the same as a peptide backbone. The only difference is it's longer. And now we're going to look at, you know, exactly what are those carbon and nitrogen atoms doing. They actually form a zigzag pattern um, because of the peptide bond geometry. Remember when we talked about hydrocarbons, even though we, we frequently draw them as being all in a line, we draw, you know, carbon, 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 carbon. But really, it's more like a zigzag, isn't it? Because there's a tetrahedral structure at each of these, and so they can't actually be in a line. So the carbon and nitrogen atoms also form their own pattern. It's a little different, though, because we've got this um, carbon atom here with the carbonyl oxygen. That's a double bond, and so this carbon has a trigonal planar geometry. And then we have this nitrogen, which has a tetrahedral geometry. There's a lone pair that's not shown. And then these carbons have tetrahedral geometry. Well, what happens is that these six atoms here lie in the same plane. So there's these, these planar sections on this backbone. So here's the side chains just indicated as R groups, and the alpha carbons are listed here. The rotation of groups around this carbon-nitrogen bond is hindered. We can have rotation around single bonds, but it's hindered here. And we won't go into details about that. But you can end up with cis-trans isomerism um, being possible. But the trans isomer, which is as it's drawn here, is preferable. And so they're mostly going to be a fairly elongated chain, but they are going to form this zigzag shape. Here's the uh, primary structure of human myoglobin. And you see it's just the order of these different amino acids. Now, this is not its shape. It's just putting this zigzag so that it fits on a slide. 